question. Uh, I, I guess Xavier would be probably more better to answer this than me. From what I've understood, it's about it's about the topic of um, the film. Like I think after after uh, just La Fin du Monde and uh, the life uh, and the death of, of John F. Donovan, I think Xavier wanted to somehow come back home. You know, he did a film in Montreal, filmed in Montreal with his friends, and I think it makes sense to work with a music composer Quebecois. You know, that lives a few blocks from him. So I think that's the idea, just to to have this very like this sort of Quebecois blood like all through and uh, yeah I think that's probably what happened to me yeah I know him because he he called me one day uh, I've, I've learned after a while that he, he listens to my music and I was very touched and intimidated that he listens to my music while writing and stuff so it feels like very weird especially in the, in the script where you see like now he would hear this song from me it's very special um, and yeah, I don't know, he, ju he just called me one day and said, and himself, that's the beauty of it, not like his agent calling my agent, you know, like, you wanted to talk to me, artist to artist, and and if he felt even shy, I was like, what? Like, how can you be shy? Like, he's incredible. And and we just, we, we thought it was silly to just talk on the phone, so uh, I, I took my bike, I went to his place, we met, listened to music, and that's where it started. Yeah. I had no idea because I didn't study that. And um, actually, I went to a friend of mine, Michel Corriveau, who writes a lot of um, music for film and series, mainly in, in, in Quebec. And I was like, Xavier Donat just called me help. <laughs> I didn't know like, how am I supposed to do that. And he, he, he helped me throughout so nicely. What's great by not knowing is that we end up working in a way that's a bit unusual. We didn't do it the, 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 the proper way it's working now. Because I have I just had this image, you know, um, of Angelo Badalamenti um, with, um, with, for Twin Peaks, you know, uh, when he's just like explaining, when he's blowing on the piano and he's just like, composing the theme and, and, and showing it like this with the dark this was in my imagination and somehow that's why I recreated because that's how it came. I was mainly improvising beside Xavier in studio with or without images. That's how it came through. So yeah, I, I guess we made we, we, we made it and, and Xavier accepted me with my non experience, you know. It was stressful to find a place because you have, you you know, you record for Xavier Dolan, you want it to sound good and especially you don't want, because I always have problems when I record, like there's always crack, noise, something happened, like I never managed to have a perfect record, that's also the beauty of it, now I've learned to embrace this serendipity somehow and and for Xavier and, and his team, like we can go to Paris, uh, Toronto, New York, whatever, you know. They don't care. They have the money and all that. And but I th I thought uh, a bit what I explained earlier that it would make sense to stay in Montreal. And there's this studio I love. It's called a uh, PM Studio. Um, they they record a lot of uh, Sarah McLaughlin stuff. They record the music for the film Her also there. And Arcad Fire goes there once in a while. So it's just this nice, comfy. There's a fireplace. Just very comfortable, inspiring studio. We went there for the demos. But since the demos turned out to be the finals, so we went there for the finals. So that's that's how it happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That came after it. Okay, so how it happened is that while recording, we of course we encounter problems, like I always when I'm around. So one day, uh, for some reason, uh, because it was so humid that the radio waves got into the like the mics. So in the recording you hear like the radio in the back and the other day there was one of the mic was not like wrongly plugged. So we had this like sort of sound. I was so upset because it's like, it's like one of the maybe three best studios in Montreal. Like it's it's not about that. It's, it's just, I guess, bad luck. But it, it ended up that um, the, the track with the sound in it, the annoying sound, uh, is in the scene when they're in the club and and there's this huge track playing like very EDM that fades out and the piano come in 
and the, the, the remaster, the, the remixer, sorry, uh, was inspired by the sound and he said he loved it because when you could go out of a club, you still have this, you know, sort of acouphène type, like, and, and he was like, it made total sense, so he, it, it fit the film without knowing it, you know, and same with the radio, it's a, it's a moment where we, there was other noise, so when I did the soundtrack, I purposely changed the order, it's, it's not the same versions that in the film, and I took Per, myself, I, I try to hide some noise with section people speaking and noise from the film. I loved, I love to do that, and then I had like, I don't know, two hours of noise and and dialogues I could choose to 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 make a soundtrack. That's a that's a short film on itself. It all started at his place when he just explained me roughly what the idea was, and I could, I had like two. Uh, track list he had prepared for me. One was uh, the music that would be featuring in the film that's not not in truth of all the pop music that was there and the other one was like inspiration, things he would like the music to sound like even though he wanted my sound sort of and, and he gave me a, a copy of the script that was not the final uh, and I read it in one night and I took notes and I, j I didn't know how to do that, I just naturally I took notes and create links and try to understand and it's it's reading script is, is like a play it's a bit I mean I find it tricky because there are many characters at the same time and it's hard to figure out I, I needed the, another sheet almost drawing the characters to understand what's going on who's who um, but it, everything made sense when it was coming through his mouth you know when we were in studio it was like okay now there's this scene this character this happens blah 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 and 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 there's this character he he, he he loses himself, he goes swimming, and he like, and he explained me, and, and, and I was playing, and, and also while I was recording, uh, I always, there's no note that Xavier was not there, because I didn't want to go through the back and forth process of like, you work on something, you think it's good, and then it comes back, and it's not what you want, and then I feel everyone loses time when we do that. So since I had him beside, then it was super fast. And I had him directing me, really like a conductor of, I was his orchestra, sorry, the extension. I say sometimes the extension of his, of his soul, you know, because he wants to do it, just, he just, he's, he can't, but I'm, I'll be his hand for, for a, little, a little time. And that's mainly how the music came out, yeah. Well, there was for sure some Schubert that I was very inspired by. Um, the Stomato song, uh, another love that's in the film. A lot of, like, sort of rock pop that, that's in the film, always very far in the background, that I used to hear and listen when I was a teenager, sort of. Um, and some Mozart stuff, too. So it was very, It's I think it's a mixture of... Um, and, and I think there was some Gabriel yeah, too, also just like the, the type of... Uh, and, and what was clear, he, he wanted pure piano. Like at try I was like, I, I love to experiment with sounds. So I had all those ideas too. And that's before uh, having read the script. And now I found out, and it makes total sense with the film, the piano for me is this moment where, because the characters don't um, confess much. We don't know about what's going inside. They don't talk a lot in the film. Um, so every time they're on their own, there's often piano. Piano is like taking a huge place. And piano, for me, speaks for them to us about what they experience, experiment. And I think that's, that's the strength of it. And that's why Xavier wanted like pure piano, not no effect, no electronic, not other instrument. Well, except the mandolin ones, but at the end the scenes got cut. So we stick to very um, straight piano. So that's very interesting. I didn't know you could do it, but that's how it happened. So, so imagine, one day in the studio with Xavier means, it means two hours. It means like he's late because he's always having all those things to do. Then he arrives, then it's like a tornado. We do have to do that, da 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 da, -da and then poof, he leaves. And then we deliver the files before he leaves so he can hear it, listen to it in his car towards, he's already thinking, you know, and then he's using those, while very often while he's filming he will play the music on the scene and so it inspires everyone it makes sense and the characters know what's going on and then he would he edits himself the film and he would cut edit to the music so at the very end um, 
it was very this sort of kept work together and that's why we decided to keep the demos as i was saying earlier we didn't we didn't re-record all the tracks so they would sound perfect but we kept it because there was something very beautiful about those mistakes i talk about the fragility uh of the improvisation the playing the hesitations there's something to it i think that really suits the film and yeah Exactly. Yeah, I know it's completely, as I said, un, not non orthodox. You know, it's not the way to do it. And I think, honestly, we should do that more often. Now that I know how it's working, because it's so much more efficient. Like it's insane. We met seven times, maybe two hours, and everything was fixed for the music. So no pre-meeting, no back and forth, no me working for nothing, no him losing time to listen to things that don't work at the end, you know, and unless the, unless uh, unless um, a director would work with a composer and without just like do it and like just accept everything, but those back and forth, I mean I've worked in advertisement for example and it's so energy consuming for one minute 30 seconds at the end, so um, I think it's very, at least for the composer session side, I, I get that you cannot have, uh, you cannot bring an orchestra, you know, on the plateau and then during the scene of the orchestra playing and then adapting, you know, of course. But with the piano like this, for the ideas, it was very, it was just pure condensed creativity. You cannot imagine like every night before, I mean, it was always the worst night. I could not sleep, you know, I was like, I need to sleep to be top shape tomorrow. And I was just like stressing out. And, and after he would leave the studio, I was like having this boost of energy because being in contact with this superhuman being was just very simple and, and lovely, but it, it sort of like it triggers something very powerful inside of you. It just like brings the best of you out and that's one of his strengths. And I think that's what he does, I see a lot with his actors, or his non-actors, sometimes people he work with are not even actors, or, um, and, and it feels like uh, that's the way he worked with me, just like bringing out what I even didn't know would exist myself. Um, I would for sure do it again. I think uh, it took a while before I do it, and because because I, I love everything and I, I don't have enough time. I love composing, touring, featuring, doing, I don't know, advertisements. I like, I like all of that. Um, I like the creative stuff and connecting with people. And so, but this, this came as, as I, I mean, it was not a good time when it arrived because I was finishing a tour about to compose a new album. Now I'm like, I feel like I'm a year delayed in my program, you know, but also it's a good reason, isn't it? And. And if there's another, that's I think that's what's gonna happen. Maybe not, but that's the way I see it. Like an exciting offer I can't refuse. Not for the money, not for the fame, for the artistic. Like when Xavier asked me, I'm like, I've seen all of his film. I, I'm in love with the character, the, the way he thinks, what he proposes. So it was just, it's a no brainer. Like I, I, I was on holiday and I, and I chopped my holiday for that because it was, holiday and not a type of holiday you know so I, I expect that this is how it could and I wish will be next time uh, but it can be in five years I don't care you know it's yeah I don't think I will become a, like a music composer but it's certainly in a field that I want to explore more it's very exciting yeah well I do that a lot and I love to do that and Xavier since Xavier wanted like pure piano I had to stick to this because I really feel like this music is not mine somehow. It's like I'm doing what he wants to have, you know. So I we explored a bit more, a bit more on the on the soundtrack. So there's some strings at one point. It's actually it's the mandolin sound. We took sampled, we stretched, and we create some pads with it. We add some bass also, uh, just to cr make it thicker. But in the film, it's very, very just, just raw piano. So no, no John Cage stuff. No. Hmm. I don't remember. Yeah, l'amitié, the first one on the, the the soundtrack that's not in the film has been cut. Also, it was the opening act, and 
that's the closest to the Schubert theme from the sonata. And it's this very bright, major, solid, confident, but also gentle and, 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 and friendship you know, theme that all the rest are variations upon. And to me, it was this sort of a... They both have a life that's decent and it's working and they have this friendship, but it's just like what's above, you know? And, and the declinations of the film show us what's underneath, you know, to find another truth, to find another love at the end. So yeah, let me see, I think it's the first one that came. I, I think I cannot tell for the picture because we didn't do much. Um, except the very last session uh, we had a I had a scream and the film was not finished but fin finished filming it was so easy to to understand what's going on because I could really follow the, the movement or anticipate or work with that uh, so it's easier for the fit of course um, but, uh, but, for, but for being like creative I think to have an idea uh, to have Xavier and to explore without image, but with my own image, to find themes, to create ambience. That I think it's easier without, and then to shape like yeah. So let's say let's put it that way. So everything that is like just creative and coming out is is easier without with just a script or the idea. And when it's time to sculpt it, put a content like shape it, Germanize it. Uh, that's uh, that's when you uh, that's when the image is very helpful. I st I think every project I did so far is always different. But what's common is always starting with improvisation, and I sort of record like you say analog. It, often the sounds very bad also, and now I use Ableton to organize and to 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 add layers and to prepare demos that are like fuller um, notes come at the very end so when I'm finished and I'm like mm, I should publish sheet music maybe that's when I sit like I'm finishing now the sheet music for the film because it's not you know and it's different now because it's improvisation so writing down improvisation sounds a bit not anachronistic but like you know contra contradictory so I'm, I'm debating about that with how to do it um, so yeah and, and Except when uh, for the mandolin, for example, like when other people are involved, they need to know what's going on. So we sort of wrote down some chords and and and, and, and shaping it. So no, it's it's very much flexible, and that's something I do. That's something I do in 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 my shows too. You know, like I I go on stage and I have a set list, but it may change, and I improvise, and because you don't know, you don't know what who's in front of you, and sometimes you feel people are. Are, are are bored or like they want more and, and I think it's the same with the film like you need to you need to be very um, flexible to to what's gonna happen and and again that's something I've, I've learned through that I didn't know that but sometimes a scene is cut or like is longer and we and you need to you, you, if you stick to what you did too much I think you'll be always frustrated yeah my phone is actually full of uh, full of excerpts I have like 300 I don't know of them of like ideas often sound check when I'm touring I don't have a piano and then when I sound check I'm like mm, lovely piano it inspires me a theme I take the phone and just like record it um, so there's a lot of themes like this that just come out and one day I sit listen back majority 99% like goes to garbage and there's this one idea mm, and then I take it and I try to do something with that uh, iPad I don't use um, so it's either yeah my little composing setup, but sometimes when I inspiration is there. Sometimes it's, I'm in the plane, you know, with my laptop and like very shitty ear earbuds, you know, like mix because I have an idea now. So uh, yeah, I just and the phone's too small. I cannot use those app to compose. But uh, yeah, that's how it works now. But it was different two years ago, so I guess it may change in the future too. I don't know. The soundtrack is 20 minutes, which is very short. There's much more because we cut some stuff and we have many different takes and all of that. But yeah, I cannot count. But I think, I guess 20 minutes is the official number that's under contract. So because it's a film, it's not because it's not just sync, synchros, you know, and it's not just pure music. It, it, it's really, but that's why I think it feels like 
music is divided in two worlds because Xavier is very good at selecting very powerful song that like he did that with Moderat for um, I think it was in Mami uh, very maybe for the the trailer super powerful powerful song and and um, and, he, and he plays it uh, so he's good at it but also leaving place for instrumental that speaks to himself he uh, he knows what he wants I doubt it sometimes I, I didn't tell him but I at, fir at first I was shy you know so I would not tell everything I, I may, maybe I should knowing the person now I should have but is intimidating just for what he, not it he, isn't he's not intimidating at all but big for what he's done and also he's so sure of himself and affirmative so you're like okay um, you just try to do your best and um, so sometimes I was like well really we go there and then when you sit with the image you're like oh okay that's why like Le Souper for example with the scene I was like mandolin and like it sounds like like a little lullaby I was like, how is that working and then you see it you're like oh wow it triggers emotion incredibly um, and towards the end I think where I where I, I took my courage was to propose. I was like, oh, what if we try this? What, what would we do that? You know, and then we try little things and it was super, he's always open to try things. And he's very decisive at uh, deciding what goes or, or not. Yeah, freer but lost. So <laughs> I, it's hard to compare. Um, I think now it's working because piano is my the world I control and I understand. I think when it's time to uh, write for other instrument, like one by one, it's fine. But thinking like music composer, like they have this brain, they understand the orchestra and the spectrum, and they know how to use it. And this is what I'm not there yet. And I'm, I mean, I have my life in front of me. I think so. I'm gonna go step by step. But uh, um, and I really want to get that eventually. Um, so I think that's their advantage, like they, and they have probably methodology, like I had to come with my own, and I lost time on my own because I did things and I was like, ah, why, I should have thought of that before. But also it's great because you learn it yourself, you learn your, discover your own way. So it, I'm very torn between, uh, yeah, I, I, of course, back in the days I thought listening, uh, studying um, to music composer, but it felt too restrictive for me and it felt too, that's not like I, I, I love too much people, live shows, creating like album concept featuring with other artists. So it felt like too restricted to only dedicate to that. I see all the lacks I'm having now. It's like countless, but uh, I guess I'm, I'm going to take them, I guess one by one. And, and also I have like, I'm nicely surrounded. If someone comes tomorrow and is like, I want an orchestra thing, I'm like, I mean, I, I know I know my tools. I know people. I know people who can arrange, and it's going to be a, a great project to the. But I cannot do everything on my own. Uh, I guess that's the beauty of it too, because I don't know. Uh, isn't it nice to have like a job that you need to learn forever? You know, you, I'm not blase. I'm just like this is my job. I'm, ma I'm master at it, and I just do it. I like. I like. It's keeping me alive. You know. It's hard to answer. It's like a coup de foudre, you know, like love at first sight. Uh, it's just, I tried other instruments, like I, I played accordion for like a summer job in the street, like uh, busking, you know, and I played guitar and clarinet because they didn't want me to play piano at high school, so I had to learn clarinet. Um, so I've, I organ and like a bit of drum, like I've always liked all the instruments, but why is the piano i mean i need to like intuitively it's just that's the place where i feel at home and i'm, I'm uh, you know if i analyze it i think it's it's a, it's very it's a full instrument you can, you can you have like the whole spectrum of many it's it can be monophonic and polyphonic you can you know you can reduce like a full orchestra and play it on the piano it's harder on the flute you know so that's probably something uh, because I'm a bit I love people but I'm a solitaire I'm a lonely person too and I can spend a lot of time alone on the piano and, and loving it and it's um, yeah also 
the sound. There's so much music written for the piano also. So it's infinite. It's very, you are into the infinity, like into the universe. Like I will not, it's impossible to play everything that's been written for the piano, even if I dedicate all my time since my dad my death and and that there's something very f there's a freedom to it to be like oh, in this massive uh, world different genres different epochs and different styles also because the, we don't talk about jazz and we don't like you know we, 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 we could go anywhere else with that pop music has interesting sound too um, but it's very love at first sight and and it's and it's crazy like if I go it's like having a crush on someone if I go in a in a club, in a bar, in a cafe, and there's a piano, there's this, like, oh, should I go? No, no, I cannot go. And it's really like how to approach it to maybe eventually play. It's the same as when you have a crush for someone. Um, so it's very, it, it has to do with uh, very deep inside my, my, my emotion. I think, it's like human beings, no kidding. It goes with the, the crush, but I think each piano has something to say. It's about us to, to, to discover it. Uh, I like broken pianos because they're limited and you need to be creative with the limitations. But I like like a beautiful sounding Fazioli, like the one I use for the soundtrack, Steinway, Yamaha, like it, they, where you can control everything and like you can have like get very strong. I like those long, like nine foot piano because it's so powerful, but I like the small one also. And you, it, there's a soul and then an old piano, like an old piano feel like, like being with like older people, like you need to be careful, listen. They have so much to say, you know, they've lived so much and young ones like just want to exit, but it goes all the direction you need to control them or yourself. So it, it, to me, it's very this relation uh, upright. And even like I, I use, I still collect like those, Cheap, 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 like keyboards or things you buy for like in a second hand, like for five bucks that has those weird sounds. It's just, there's something, toys for kids, and there's this beautiful sounds everywhere. It's a, and it's about what you do with it. Um, I'm still, because I do a lot of other music that is not out, I do a lot of like weird music or music that's meant to be not good you know <laughs> I love I love not good music that's of course my label is not inclined to <laughs> to publish it but uh, so exploring all those sounds too is important to me no I don't have any interest in doing that I think uh, I could what I could do knowing me so far if I'm very inspired by a uh, music theme I would I could write variations on it that's the closest I would get but um, playing like an arrangement like a reduction I don't I don't see why I would do that yeah. sorry <laughs> uh, it's not that extreme but uh, I it, I totally get it's I think it's uh, there are two sides. I think time would tell. I think we're switching paradigm. It's scary because it's new. And when it's new, we only know what we lose. We don't know what's coming. I think we should get more money, that's for sure. And it's on the hands of, it's hard to know. Is it the distributors? Is it the companies? Is it the, the, the federal laws of each country? Um, there are good sides too we need to talk about. Like, hey, um, I'm, I'm, I'm playing my first show in, in Russia, sold out. They're like, how do they know me? Because I played in Mexico once. It was like 300 people that like, came. They all know me by Spotify. Because, you know, so you can reach new audiences that would have been harder to get with just physical. So there are good things like that. Um, it democratizes also, I think, the music. Uh, there's also a lot of bad stuff, you know, available. You know, it's and and it's not because an algorithm chooses it for you that it's good. I think it's limited. Also, I don't believe in those self-learning, in artificial intelligence, you know, and like the algorithm. I think we, I taste it. I feel that it's robotic, and and I think artists should take control over it and and 
make art with it and like take control over it. But um, I don't know. There's different kind of speculations. One of them is like we're gonna go more and more towards streaming. People will be ready to pay more and more for streaming services, and, and that money should come back to the artists. I think uh, somehow I wish, and I like this. The LP coming back, like the vinyl is coming back. We sell a lot of vinyls, uh, depending where, but uh, in I would say, generally speaking, in bigger cities, we sell more uh, vinyls than CDs. And um, it's as if, on, it's like two functions of music. One is background music, like Eric Satie would probably be very happy with this like furniture music, just like background stuff. It plays, there's this, peaceful piano playlist playing and it's in the back you don't really know who's playing you know it's just there and this I link it a lot to films like we used to watch films there's a soundtrack and now we used to have soundtrack of our lives it's also problematic there's people who can't fall asleep without music uh, what does it tell because when you turn off the sound the radio or the music questions come you know you look at yourself in the mirror in the of the, of the darkness of the night and do you like what you see you know so there's also this, um, and on the other hand, we have the, the LPs come in, which is this very tactile, beautiful object. You place it, and it's annoying. You need to turn it, you need to go back all the time. You need to take care of it. Um, and that's what I like about you, and you know, uh, we're not ready to be robots. It might come, but not now. No, I think it has, I mean, does have anything to do with teacher? I mean, teacher embody the the idea of the conservatory. It's like a consortium between the director, the, the the teachers. I understand that they have a job and they need to protect. They they cannot just be open and and uh, do what they want because they would probably lose their job. You know, so I, I I cannot and I and sometimes I you know I take it more on my on myself and I'm. And I'm like, maybe I should have just been more clever than the system and do like Lambert, put a mask and do my stuff on the side and then f and, and staying at the conservatory and taking, because I've, I've taken so much from that. Um, it's just what I don't, what I disagree is, it's like classical music became something that somehow belonged, I find, to an, an, elit an elitism. And it's like a, it's like a, a um, hermetic language. And I think everyone can understand basic things in, in music. I'm 100% I'm sure about that. And they need to know that. That's why in the conservatory, I would always explain to people what I'm about to play. When did Chopin compose it? What was the context? What's the theme of the sonata from Beethoven? Like, I, it was very important to me because people maybe look like or they fake that they understand, but maybe not. If it's just for one person who don't, I mean, it's important. That's my teacher side, my special educator side, probably. Very important. And think just like improvisation, you know? Improvisation is not a jazz thing. It belonged to classical for a long tradition, and even even before classical, like, it's in so many music traditions. And I'm like, why we cannot bring that back? You know, why so many classical musicians, if you take the sheet music away, there's it ends, it's like the plug for like a radio, like a, um, it's sad. I think we could, uh, I think there's a division of tasks that happen, especially in the 20th century, of like composer that compose crazy stuff and people that focus on being interpret and they're like amazing. And I get you don't have time to do all of that, but also I feel like maybe we could believe more in people's capacity and try to at least expose them to everything to see how they react if they couldn't. What if, uh, what if they learned, like I wanted to learn harpsichord. Uh, it, was, it was not allowed, I had to stick to the piano uh, because it would destroy my technique. Maybe, I think it's true, but also maybe there would be a way, you know, to find a compromise. And my way, I wanted to learn harpsichord so I could improvise with basso continuo it was my way to, it's like escaping road, you know. So I wish it would have been more encouraged within the system. But also the system is great and it works as a system to conserve, it's like a museum. It's like asking a museum to be in situ all over the place, no walls. And like at one point, like you need, you make decisions. Yeah. Both, both together. Uh, 
it, like it happened yesterday like I improvise in front of people and then like I find that something comes out like finding like a gold thread you know and you sculpt it and you don't know what it is and it that's how I see music I see music pre-existent to my discovery you know I don't feel like I come and this is that's why I'm maybe a bit open with those questions of copywriters and I don't feel like this belongs to me because this has probably been played before anyway not this way not exactly the same but we have like there are 88 notes in the piano so more or less all the things have maybe been tried but also everything is new so this, this interesting par par products so when I that's something I like finding something sculpting over days and one day I'm like okay now that's it we found the place and that I feel like it's it's balanced it's working there's beauty to it but there's also beauty to offer it to a public to share it and to adapt because sometimes you're like oh tonight oh they seem to like this section let's explore it more you know let's go there oh let's skip this oh let's bring that back this I love too we uh, make sure the piano is tuned every time I play because uh, an untuned piano can be like annoying I mean and actually like hunky tonky like rarely on tune piano is lovely and but it triggers another imaginary and it feels I would play differently on it different type of music to completely yeah, turn rack time you know you don't do the same thing uh, one note off in a tune piano that's a bit but you need to deal with it and you need to go around and you use it and um, there's a way there's a way to I remember often like the very last C is untuned and sometimes I make joke and show with that. Uh, but um, yeah, but I don't know yet how to tune a piano. It's complicated, the majority of the notes are three strings, so if just one is off, the other one, it, it vibrates a lot and it's... Uh, but for composing, this is a great potential and I could use that a lot. Uh, it gives me, just thinking of it, now it's giving me ideas, but playing a show, I, I don't think it's, uh, uh, yeah, I don't think it would be interesting now. And it's not just countries, it's, it's like cities, really. It changed from one city to another. Um, it's hard to tell, it's linked to, it, you know, like, the, my, my feel like the cities I love the most are the cities where my music works the most, people come the most, and we get the, you know, so there's some, is it just my attitude that attracts differently people? Probably part of it, but there's something like, you know, there's a something in the air in each city. We, there's a reason why we like some cities and less others. And you can feel, yeah, you can feel what, like what people want. I mean, it takes time and I'm, I mean, I haven't played enough to know that mm, Paris likes this and Madrid likes that and New York is more this compared to LA and I, I can't tell but but somehow there is something and, and there's something in my imagination that I for sure want to explore more and more because I get more and more freedom in my shows and I'm now able to shape it a bit but what 10% from what I would like to be able to do and then some tools don't allow me the piano is fine but the electronic stuff I'm using on stage uh, doesn't allow me it's like robots you know so they, 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 they follow but I need to give them orders and like it's not as flexible as I want it to be and that's something I'd like to uh, develop more well that's one of the city like I, I love um, I fell in love with Berlin the very first time I came here I don't know maybe 10 years ago 12 years ago I don't know, 13 and I remember I cried a lot in Berlin of happiness because um, it was this very dense mixture of uh, my hometown so it feels it's huge of course but it feels a bit like a village to me it felt like very um, because of the nature I think and like the fact that you can like draw like bike I bike a lot so you, you bike in the forest where you could get lost somehow and then there's a lake and some people like swimming, maybe naked. And then you keep on and there's like a, like a rave party outdoor and you go to museum on the way to job and there's people who go working while people come back from partying. And, and this 
this also all this within this very cosmopolitan mixed like uh, background people around the German umbrella that triggers like classical composer and philosopher for me uh, it, it, it just fits with a lot of places inside of me um, yeah so it, it's it's it touches me and it allows you to be somehow who you want to be what whatever and it, it's feasible it's it's still I mean it's maybe a bit different now but it was very affordable when I was here I could you could work three days a week and have all the rest to create compose whatever be what you what you want to do there was place also still is but you know it's changing now. but um, so yeah so freedom uh, nature and culture uh, people 